Listen, everybody, to the words I have to say. Better get ready, because the Lord is coming one day. Thank you for tuning in to the Prophet Daniel's Report. This is Daniel White IV, the eldest son of Daniel White III. The intro music that you just heard is my late grandfather, Daniel White Jr., singing a song titled Get Ready. Today, my father, Daniel White III, is going to share with you news and information relating to biblical prophecy so that you can be prepared for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Daniel White III is the national best-selling author of over 20 books, including Just Jesus and The Prayer Motivator. He has spoken in meetings across the United States and in 23 foreign countries, and is the president of Gospelite Society and Torch Ministries International. Now, here's your host, Daniel White III. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Prophet Daniel's Report. This is report number 495. My name is Daniel White III here to remind you that the Lord Jesus Christ is coming back one day soon and that you need to be prepared. This broadcast is not about predictions, nor is it about setting dates, as some people foolishly have done in the past, uh, making themselves look ridiculous because the Lord Jesus Christ commanded us not to do that. Because nobody knows the day but God himself. The Lord did tell us to warn you and to tell you to get prepared. So this uh, podcast, this broadcast is all about preparation. Get ready, get ready, get ready. First today, let's look at some signs of his coming in the news. Uh, as you know, the disciples asked Jesus Christ in Matthew 24, 3, What shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Jesus Christ then went on to give them and us clear signs that show us when we can begin to expect to see the coming of the Lord and the end of the world as we know it. Those signs include... Uh, the appearance of false Christs and false prophets, wars and rumors of wars, famines, pestilences, uh, fatal epidemic diseases, earthquakes in divers various places, increased persecution of believers, the gospel being preached in all the world, Signs and great wonders in the heavens involving the sun, moon, stars, and planetary movements. Number nine, distress and perplexity among people. Number ten, increased violence as in the days of Noah. Number eleven, increased homosexuality and sexual immorality as it was in the days of Lot. Beloved, looking at world events through the lens of the Word of God, let's look at some headlines from today's news that point to the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. First, today under the sign category of distress among nations, according to United Press International, Russia has begun a large-scale militarization of the Arctic Ocean region with a military command structure planned for 2017. It comes after recent discoveries of oil and natural gas reserves under the ocean floor and the possibility that a potential northern sea route, an alternative to the Suez Canal, could soon be established. Former Soviet bases are being reactivated. A 6,000-soldier permanent military force will be established in northwest Russia region, and radar and guidance systems are planned in the area as well. 
Second today, under the sign category of wars and rumors of wars, according to the Associated Press, Shiite powerhouse Iran has pledged enduring support for the Shiite-led government of Iraq in its battle against an ascendant Sunni insurgency spearheaded by the Islamic State group. Iran's president told the visiting Iraqi prime minister that Iran has supported Baghdad from the first day and will remain on that path until the last day. Iran has been sending military advisors and weapons to Iraq. Third, today under the sign category of distress among nations, According to United Press International, two U.S. Navy destroyers with ballistic missile defense capabilities are being forward deployed to Japan. The ships with AG's systems are the USS Benfold and USS Malias, both of which are currently home ported in San Diego, California. The announced movement comes as the Navy continues a strategy to focus naval capabilities on the Asia-Pacific region where vital sea lanes, potential gas and oil deposits, and a growing Chinese Navy feature prominently. China and Japan are in dispute over ownership of the Senkaku Islands in the East China Sea. China is also in dispute with Vietnam the Philippines, Malaysia, and Brunei over the Spratly Islands in the South China Sea. Fourth today, under the sign category of the turmoil in Israel and the Middle East, according to the Jerusalem Post, the UN is considering replacing its uh, peacekeepers who fled the Golan Heights in recent months with drones. Uh, Argentina's envoy to the UN made the suggestion to Israel and Syria. Damascus reportedly accepted the request, but Israel has been slow to uh, make a decision on the matter. A senior Israeli defense source said this is a very sensitive decision with multiple security implications. Military sources said they would inform the UN of their decision in the coming days. Fifth, today, under the sign category of the turmoil in Israel and the Middle East, according to Ynet News, Secretary General Ban Ki-moon is urging Palestinian and Israeli leaders to halt unilateral initiatives that fuel mistrust and to make the tough com compromises uh, needed to achieve a two-state solution. The UN chief's remarks to the UN Security Council were almost certainly aimed at Israel's continued settlement building in territory the Palestinians want for their state and the Palestinians' pursuit of a council resolution that would set November 2016 as the deadline for Israeli troops to withdraw from all Palestinian territory. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 3, 13 through 14, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Beloved, you can read these stories in more detail and get more Second Coming related news on our website at secondcomingherald.com. Now it is time for Prophecy Boot Camp. Prophecy Boot Camp is where we deal with the basics of prophecy the second coming of Christ, and what will happen in the future according to the Bible. Our aim here is not to make predictions, but to help you get prepared by understanding how things will unfold in the end times. Our topic for today is titled, Why is Revelation So Unique? 
Part 2 From Dr. Ed Heinzen's fine book, Revelation, Unlocking the Future. Four is a number generally related to the earth, which has four regions, north, south, east, west, and four seasons, spring, summer, fall, winter. In the Revelation, there are four living creatures, four angels, uh, at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds. Four angels are bound in the Euphrates River. The inhabitants of the earth have a fourfold description, tribes, tongues, peoples, and nations, and the new Jerusalem lies four square. Six is the number of man who was created on the sixth day. In Revelation thirteen eighteen, it represents the number of the ultimate man, the Antichrist, 666. Seven is the most significant number in the apocalypse. There are seven spirits, seven churches, seven lampstands, seven stars, seven lamps of fire, seven horns, seven eyes, seven seals, seven trumpets, seven bowls, seven songs, seven angels, seven thunders, seven worthies, seven heads, seven crowns, seven mountains, seven kings, and seven last plagues. In addition, there is the sevenfold description of Christ, the sevenfold message to each of the churches, the sevenfold praise of the Lamb, the sevenfold result of judgment, the sevenfold division of mankind, sevenfold blessings, the sevenfold description of the locusts, the seven thousand who were killed, the sevenfold triumph, and the seven new things. Then there is the number three and a half, which is half of seven. Twelve is the number of completeness. There are twelve tribes of Israel, twelve apostles of Christ, a twenty-four elders, a double of twelve. The tree of life has twelve types of fruit. New Jerusalem has twelve gates guarded by twelve angels. The city has twelve foundations. There are twelve precious stones adorning the foundation stones and twelve pearls. There are also multiples of twelve. Each of the twelve tribes contains twelve thousand people, uh, making a total of one hundred and forty four thousand, twelve thousand times twelve, and the wall measures one hundred and forty four cubits. 12 times 12. Ladies and gentlemen, if the Lord should tarry his coming and we live, we will continue looking at this interesting topic on our next broadcast slash podcast. In closing, beloved, let's consider what God wants you and I to do in light of his second coming. Jesus Christ said in Luke 19.13 to occupy till I come. In light of that, we are continuing our Bible study series on the books of First and Second Thessalonians, which Paul wrote to believers who had concerns about the second coming of Jesus Christ and what they should do as they waited. This subject is titled, Comfort at the Grave, from the book Waiting on the Second Coming by Ray C. Stedman. The Thessalonians, like many of us today, were projecting the sequences of time into eternity. We all struggle with the concept of eternity. We tend to think of it as a time going on endlessly, that as is the case here on earth, we must wait for certain events that are yet future. We feel that is how it will be in heaven, despite the fact that the Word of God seeks to demonstrate that time and eternity are two different things. Time has sequences, past, present, and future. 
but eternity has only one dimension. It is present now. We struggle with that concept, as did the Thessalonians. Here we are all locked into a segment of time together. If we are in the same location, we are all feeling the same temperature, the same uh, barometric uh, pressure, uh, etc. But that is true only of our bodies. It says nothing about where our minds are at any given moment. Minds are not limited to space or time or sequence. They can go anywhere and experience anything at any time. Eternity is much more like that. That is why we have great difficulty understanding these prophetic passages in terms of time when they are really eternal events. Although I believe Paul knew the difference between time and eternity, he reassured the Thessalonians without becoming obstruse or pedantic, explaining that the living and the dead would be together when our Lord returns. That is the point at issue. He says, in effect, yes, you will see your loved ones immediately when the Lord returns. Whether you join that event when you die, or whether the Lord comes while you are yet alive, your loved ones will be with him. Beloved, if the Lord tarries his coming and we live, we will continue looking at this topic in our next broadcast slash podcast. Lord God in heaven, we pray that you would use our feeble efforts, that millions would listen, and that millions would learn and be saved, repent, and turn to Christ, and be the Christians you want them to be. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Uh, Dear friend, remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ in Matthew 24, 42. Watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord doeth come. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Beloved, if you're not ready for the return of the Lord Jesus Christ because you're not saved yet, may I encourage you to get saved today. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. Trust Jesus Christ as your Savior today. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and rose from the dead by the power of God for you so that you can live forever with him. Pray and ask him to come into your heart to save your soul today, and he will save you. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So keep looking up, dear friend, For your redemption draweth nigh. Let us join in the prayer of John the Revelator when he prayed, Even so come, Lord Jesus. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in to the Prophet Daniel's Report. Remember, you can stay up to date with prophecy news and events on our website at secondcomingherald.com. If you would like to know more about accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior, what to do after salvation, or looking for a good church home, please visit gospelitesociety.com for more information. This radio broadcast can be heard daily on Live 365, and Radio7.com, GospelightWorldRadio.com, Buzzsprout, iTunes, Blog Talk Radio, and can be downloaded from numerous outlets online. God bless, and until next time, keep looking up for your redemption draw if not. Now here's a song that will encourage you as you await Christ's return. You got to get your business straight. He's coming again. Yeah.